Well, in the wake of the Xbox One announcement, you'd be forgiven in thinking if this was going to be a pretty dry week for news. Well, thankfully we've had plenty to keep us excited this week. First up, ahead of Apple's WWDC conference, they've released a new 16GB iPod Touch on the slide at a cheaper price point, dropping the rear camera and colour choices in the process and replacing the cheaper 4th generation models that were previously available. The new 16GB iPod Touch rings up £199 and keeps the same generous 4-inch retina display that's found on the iPhone 5 and the rest of the iPod Touch range. Yet despite chopping the rear shooter, Apple has still introduced a front-facing camera, which makes the model perfect for FaceTime and Snapchat. And on another Apple note, we've seen many reports hinting that Apple is working on an iWatch, a connected timepiece for your wrist that works with iOS on your iPhone. But now even Apple's tight-lipped CEO is weighing on the subject, calling the smartwatch category incredibly interesting and hinting that the company plans to crash the smartwatch party very soon. Apple's boss Tim Cook was surprisingly open about his thoughts on the wearable computing category, one which has really started to heat up in 2013. And as well as calling it incredibly interesting, he also praised Nike's fuel band before saying that there are many problems still to be solved. And Tim Cook dodged all questions when asked whether wearable technology is a space where Apple wants to get involved in. But from a secretive company like Apple though, these comments are as big a clue as you can expect to get. And next, from Apple's biggest rival Samsung, they have announced the Galaxy S4 Mini. If you were smitten by Samsung's bigger brother, but were put off by the thumb-stretching 5-inch screen, help is at hand. While the Galaxy S4 Mini retains the same design cues as its bigger brother, it's a more compact affair and hopefully a more affordable one. The centerpiece is a 4.3-inch screen with a 960x540 resolution display rather than the original S4's full HD 5-inch panel, and it's powered by a dual-core 1.7GHz processor, and the 8.94mm thin device packs an 8MP camera around the back, and will come with both 3G and super-fast 4G flavours at launch. Things remain much the same on the software side of things, which is definitely not a bad thing. The S4 Mini runs on Android 4.2 Jellybean, and boasts many of the same extras as its forebearer including the S-Translator real-time language decoder and the ability to control your TV using infrared. Although it does drop one useful S4 feature, the dual app screen view, presumably because Samsung felt it was unnecessary on a small phone. The S4 Mini will come in white and black versions at launch, but the Korean gadget giant isn't saying when it will be available yet or how much it will cost. We're expecting to go hands-on with it at Samsung's London event on the 20th of June, however, so hopefully we'll have much more information then. And finally, the gadget show is back. Yep, our new series will be on your screens 8pm this Monday on Channel 5, with a brand new studio and presenters new and old. John will be testing action cameras, Polly's in a flying car, and Jason and Rachel Riley in the new studio testing a full array of tech. Make sure you don't miss it.